Hello everyone, my name is Mustafa. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to the Android system architecture, but I will emphasize on the software layout perspective. Uh, you have all heard of Android operating system and uh, we've been using it uh, on our phones for quite some time. Some of you have also been developing applications for Android using it for uh, many other purposes. Uh, there is no doubt that Android is popular and the ecosystem is growing. Although the smartphone market may be saturated a little bit, there are newer fields that use Android OS, uh, such as infotainment, televisions, projectors, monitors, TV sticks, and some conference devices. The product, com uh, the product developing companies uh, that use Android, of course, want to make their products not look like generic Android, but to look more like uh, custom elegant devices. Also, they want to interface their Android products with the other hardware. For this purpose, they need Android platform engineers. So as uh, Android platform engineers, our responsibility is to develop and make sure to produce these uh, unique feeling, let's say custom Android devices. Okay, let us start. As you might know, uh, Android is a Linux based operating system that is developed by Google. Google has made several design choices in developing Android and we will mention these in this section. So the first is, uh, as opposed to Linux, Google needed a very scalable and application developer friendly operating system. Uh, with this idea, Java language was selected to be the application development language and uh, Google developed many uh, frameworks and APIs on top of Linux so that developers don't need to think about the Linux system internals. The second biggest consideration in developing Android was exclusive access to devices. For this, uh, Google introduced hardware abstraction layer and as inter-process communication, they uh, developed binder and they discarded system five inter-process communication uh, for some security concerns and limitations. And the third biggest consideration was regarding power management. Android wanted Linux kernel uh, to be by default a sleep prone kernel, uh, which means uh, Linux kernel, when not used, uh, goes to sleep. But uh, to keep it up, uh, to keep it awake, uh, Google introduced wake locks. And the last but not least, uh, we have to mention memory management and garbage collection. Google introduced something called the low memory killer, which basically kills unused applications uh, without user knowledge in order to prevent memory free situations. This list goes on and on, uh, but I find these four points to be the main design differences of Android versus the Linux operating system. Uh, we, we have of course uh, some revisions to the scheduling policies uh, in the Android that is also worth mentioning. Uh, with this knowledge now, we can try to remember what we've learned in our uh, Linux system architecture video and on top we can introduce the Android system architecture. Here on the left, I have the layout I used in the Linux lecture. We have our applications. Uh, these applications talk to the services. Applications and services link to libraries. At the base of the libraries, we have the C library, which can call system interface in order to talk with the drivers. At the Linux kernel side, uh, we have device drivers uh, as well as uh, operating system mechanisms such as memory management, uh, process management, uh, virtual file system, and uh, inter-process communication. Uh, this is basically uh, what we've learned and we can uh, translate this entire diagram to Android architecture layout uh, as this. However, this is not the same thing. 
from Linux kernel, some things are subtracted and some things are added to it. Additions to the Linux kernel involve wake logs, uh, ashmem, uh, some, some sort of IPC, a new scheduling policy and uh, subtraction involve uh, system v IPC. Similarly, also there are new device drivers added, especially regarding power management. And also we have a binder added. A binder is important here because it is basically how Android applications and services intercommunicate. Uh, they use binder as the interprocess communication. On top of the Linux kernel, of course, we still have our system call interface and some Linux daemons and uh, libraries. Here, uh, on top of the Linux diamonds and libraries, uh, some Android-related Linux diamonds and libraries also added. For example, we will still be using uh, OpenSL library, uh, same as Linux, and many other libraries we will still use same as Linux. But additionally, there will be libbinder to communicate with the binder virtual device. As for the daemons, uh, there is logd, logging daemon, uh, storage d, storage daemon, uh, bluetooth d, bluetooth daemon, and uh, many more, uh, let's say, daemons. This was uh, pretty much the known territory because this was basically a standard Linux with some additions and subtractions. But from this point upward, uh, we are going to the Android specific territory. We mentioned about the need to access devices exclusively uh, and also uh, the scarce resources we need to access exclusively from the applications. Uh, Google has developed hardware abstraction layers uh, or in short hull for this. Uh, these uh, you can think of services that expose interface for controlling drivers and scarce resources. Uh, for example, we have Wi-Fi hull. Uh, we have power management hall, we have USB hall, and of, of course also uh, several other uh, hall services. Uh, on top of hall, we have basically Android Runtime, uh, also called uh, Dar Dalvik Virtual Machine, which is a virtual machine uh, running uh, APKs and also hosting lots of services that make up Android operating system. Uh, we have also Android system services. Here we will find the system server and Zygote. We will get uh, down into it a little bit later. Uh, for now, let's focus on the Android framework. On top of the services, we have Android framework, which has frameworks such as Activity Manager, uh, Window Manager, Package Manager, and uh, Notification Manager. Uh, these, let's say, services are accessible via the Android API and at the very top uh, we have applications that make use of the Android API to accomplish things, to talk with the uh, Android framework. Here an application cannot directly, uh, let's say, call how interfaces application use the Android API to call stuff from the Android framework. Android framework communicates with Android system services and system services are able to access HAL services in order to talk with the drivers. I think this, um, this communication is really important to, uh, let's say, grasp. We can of course say that um, here application developers mostly deal with these three uh, components, whereas the Android system engineers or OSP engineers deal with the rest of them. Okay, so let me just show you another illustration with examples so that this is understood better. Here at the very uh, bottom we have uh, our hardware or uh, scarce resources. Let's say um, we have USB device, Wi-Fi device and uh, power management IC device. Uh, of course, we have many more devices, but this is just an example. In the kernel, we have their respective uh, drivers and a whole bunch of other uh, related drivers. Those drivers are accessed by the HAL services. 
we again here have the USB hall, Wi-Fi hall and uh, power management hall. For example, uh, as Android system engineers, what we can do, we can develop our custom services uh, here uh, at the category of Android system services and we can call this uh, power management hall, for example, or any other hall. And uh, there could be uh, a custom application that is calling our service. So this is basically how HAL is accessed uh, if we were to develop our own uh, custom applications. Uh, Android itself uh, uses this, uh, let's say, layout quite often. And if you recall, I said for interprocess communication, a binder is used, uh, but it's not just called binder, it is, uh, let's say, uh, some concrete interfaces we have. Uh, we have uh, AIDL and HIDL. So uh, 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 from Android 10 onwards uh, for uh, inter-application, inter-service or application to service communication, we are using AIDL, uh, but for the hull access, we are using the HIDL. Of course, uh, I will delve into these uh, AIDL, HIDL topics uh, a little bit more uh, in, in the next videos. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I, I just wanted to show you uh, a, a simple communication layout. I want to also show you how things boot up. So uh, we know from Linux, Linux that uh, how things boot up until init, init process. Here, basically, init process in Android uh, starts the Dalvik virtual machine, and we that calls the zygote, and zygote uh, starts the system server. So uh, here, system server is responsible for basically uh, starting all the other services. System server also initiates the activity manager and activity manager uh, is responsible for uh, simply spawning the uh, applications as we know it. So it can spawn custom app, uh, our launcher, home app, calendar and so on. So this is basically in the red line. Uh, this is how things uh, initiate uh, from the boot. Here, uh, I would like to also show you this figure from the Android Docs. Uh, we have here a really nice illustration of Android system layout. As, as, as you can see uh, at the very bottom, we have the Linux kernel and on top of it uh, are the native daemons and libraries. Then going upwards, we have the HAL, Android runtime, system services and Android framework. Here on top of the Android framework, we have Android API and system API. Uh, application developers uh, will be using Android API to develop their applications. And as uh, Android platform engineers or uh, device manufacturers, uh, we will make use of the system API and Android framework to develop uh, system applications. Please pause the video and take in this information here because this is, in my opinion, very crucial to understand. Uh, and now to finish the video, I would like to thank all of you for the support, interest and the comments. I've been reading and replying to them all. It really motivates me to do more videos. Also, I would like to say uh, if you notice a mistake, please correct me or ask me in the comment section as I'm not the ultimate uh, Linux or Android expert here. Uh, this being said, uh, thanks again. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.